The Suez Canal is the crucial link connecting East and West, a dualism that formed in public imagination hundreds of years ago due to the difficulties of traveling from one to the other. Before its creation, mariners had to contend with pirates and terrible weather while sailing around the Cape of Good Hope, while merchants journeying by land had to contend with theft or worse as they traversed the desert. Today, approximately 20,000 ships pass through the Suez Canal each year, carrying over a billion tons of cargo. The SCA earns Egypt over $5 billion yearly in tolls, which can cost as high as $1 million for larger vessels. The Suez Canal is a waterway that connects the Red and Mediterranean Seas. It is 120 miles long, and Egypt owns and controls the canal. When it opened in 1869, the canal enabled global trade by offering a route around Africa's Cape of Good Hope. It is still crucial to global trade, particularly in the oil industry. In 1956, Israel, the United Kingdom and France combined efforts to invade Egypt in a failed attempt to gain control of the vital canal, which the government had nationalized. Their troops retreated after the United States withdrew its backing. Let us take a look at the Evergreen ship's passage through the Suez Canal on March the 23rd, 2021. Captain Krishnan Kanthavel stood on Evergiven's bridge watching the winds gusting at 40 miles per hour blasted off the Egyptian plains and the black silhouettes of the 19 other vessels docked in Suez Bay, waiting to take turns passing the narrow waterway winding inland into the Mediterranean, could be seen from his vantage point atop the bridge. Canthavel's container ship was slated to be the 13th ship to travel the canal that day. It was also one of the most recent and valuable larger vessels, having just left the shipyard. The name Ever Given, in big lettering on its stern, was evident in vivid white color in contrast with the ship's forest green body. A little boat launched shortly after daybreak, bringing the Suez pilots who would navigate the vessel during its 12-hour trip between the seas. At times, traveling through the Suez Canal can be terrifying. The canal prevents a three-week detour across Africa, but it is narrow and shallow, measuring only 656 feet wide and 79 feet deep. Modern ships, on the other hand, are enormous and expanding in size. It was transporting over 17,000 brightly colored containers from Malaysia to the Netherlands. With its size, Evergiven's keel was just a few meters above the canal's bottom. There was minimal room for error as a result. According to records presented in an Egyptian courthouse weeks later, there had been some discussion about if the ship could safely cross the canal in that weather, and this issue had been aggravated by the fact that neither side's first language was English. Close to four adjacent ports had been closed owing to the weather, and the captain of a natural gas ship had assessed a day earlier that it was far too windy to cross the Suez Canal safely. Because the Egyptian government had not released the entire audio of what happened on the Evergivens Bridge, it is currently unknown what the pilots and crew stated about the situation. Captain Kanthaval, a skillful mariner from deep southern India, must have been under enormous commercial pressures. On board his vessel was $1 billion worth of goods, carrying IKEA furniture, Nike sneakers, Lenovo gadgets, and 100 canisters of an unknown flammable substance. Veteran captains claim that in bad weather, they frequently have little to no choice but to sail into Suez. They get threatened with being replaced by someone else if they do not complete the task. However, newer ships are outfitted with radar and digital sensors, allowing them to navigate the canal even when visibility is poor. Canthavel also had lots of Suez experience, and a former employee recalls him as a calm, experienced officer. Canthavel could barely see up to a mile ahead from the bridge. Other ships in the convoy heading north were moving, floating near the canal's entrance. Even though everyone was ready to proceed and the canal agency had given the captain the go-ahead, the captain had the option of refusing to proceed. The lead Suez pilot talked briefly on his radio in Arabic and then gave the Evergiven crew the order to advance through the Suez. These Suez pilots are recruited by the Suez Canal Authority, often known as the SCA, which has controlled the operations of the canal since Egypt took it in 1956. The pilots, 
who are typically former naval commanders, do not steer the passing ships. They are in charge of directing captains and crew, coordinating communications with the rest of the vessel convoy and the SCA control tower, and ensuring that the ships pass safely through. After sailing a few kilometers inside the Suez Canal, the Ever Given started to swerve rapidly from side to side over and over. The wind could have buffeted its blocky shape, causing it to behave like a massive sail. The pilot yelled for a hard right and a hard left turn. He had to alter this direction again since the huge hull of the Ever Given was taking too long to respond. Pull ahead, stated the lead Suez pilot, as he gave a new command. The vessel would be sailing at a speed of 13 knots or 15 miles per hour, which is way over the canal's authorized speed limit of roughly 8 knots. The second pilot opposed this order, resulting in a back and forth between the first and second pilots, with the first pilot eventually threatening to abandon the ship. The enhanced strength of the Ever Given should have improved its stability against the storm, but it also put a new variable into the equation. The pressure of fluid drops as its speed increases, according to Bernoulli's principle. Ever Given was displacing hundreds of thousands of tons of water that had to escape between the little space left between the hull and the surrounding shore. The pressure would have lessened as the water surged through, pulling the vessel closer to the beach. The draw became greater as it went faster, and it was evident the vessel was going to crash. Captain Mohammed El Sayed Hassanin had just started his shift at the SCA's headquarters office in Ismailia, which was about 50 miles north of where the Ever Given was positioned on March the 23rd. The footage captured by the CCTV cameras that lined the canal was shown on a flickering screen in front of El Sayed's control center, as pilots phoned in to report that ship number 13 in the northbound convoy had gotten stuck. Nobody in the control tower had ever seen anything like it. The ship was stuck horizontally across the channel. When the camera zoomed in on Canthaval, El Sayed could make out his forlorn silhouette. The bulbous bow had been thrust into the rocks and coarse sand beneath the river like a dagger. Because the ship's back end had also run aground and became wedged in the opposite beach, it was at a 45 degree angle to the shoreline there was no way for any vessel to go forward or backward. The power of the crash had caused the bow to raise six meters. Cargo ships aren't meant to be balanced on an incline, and with the ever given center of gravity thrown off and only a few meters of water keeping the main section of the ship together, El Sayed predicted it was split in two. It was quickly understood that Ever Given's accident was extremely unusual and would have wide-ranging consequences. Modern cargo transportation, like automobile manufacturing and grocery distribution, is a just-in-time operation founded on the premise that things will be delivered at the precise moment they're required. Ships carrying tens of thousands of containers or more may stay only a few hours in a port before being unloaded by automated cranes controlled by extremely advanced planning algorithms. Although it is a delicate model, it saves money on inventory and storage. In a supply chain, it just takes one problem to bring the entire system down. By the end of that day, 185 ships hauling gadgets, cement, water, millions of oil barrels, and a few thousand animals were docked and waiting to pass. According to a shipping journal, marine traffic was increasing and was now worth $10 billion per day. This ongoing supply chain issue is made worse by a beached container ship that is obstructing one of the world's most significant maritime routes. Given that the Suez Canal is a vital conduit for marine freight, the system had little tolerance for error. Rescue teams from all over the world were dispatched to figure out how to maneuver the vessel. Dredgers scraped tons of sand and dirt from around the ship's hull as tugboats worked for days to free it from the canal banks. After five days of relentlessly trying to get the Ever Given out, they were aided in their attempts by a king tide, which is an extremely high tide that occurs in the springtime during the full moon. Fourteen tugboats yanked and pushed the Ever Given during the high tide, and they were successful in repositioning it 30 degrees from left to right. The Ever Given had been mostly freed by the sixth morning. Thanks to the frantic midnight efforts, 
and rising waves that helped lift the boat. If tugboats and dredges were unable to move the vessel, the next step would have been to begin removing its hundreds of thousands of containers. It would have taken such a long time and required specialized helicopters and extremely tall cranes. Although taking the load off the boat might potentially damage it or throw it off balance, causing it to sink further into the sand. Every day, one million barrels of oil, 8% of the world's liquefied natural gas, and nearly 12% of all trade pass through the Suez Canal. According to Osama Rabi, chairman of the Suez Canal Authority, the Suez Canal's profits were losing 14 to 15 million dollars for each day the Ever Given remained lodged. According to Lloyd's List data, the vessel was impeding an estimated $9.6 billion in daily traffic along the canal before the crisis, which amounted to almost 2% of Egypt's GDP. This equates to $400 million and more than 3 million tons of freight per hour, or $6.7 million per minute. The blockage would have cost world trade between $6 and $10 billion each week, affecting annual trade growth by 0.2 to 0.4 percentage points. According to shipping broker Braemar ACM, the cost of renting many vessels to transfer cargo into and out of the Middle East and Asia has risen by 47% to $2.2 million. Some ships altered their path to avoid the Suez Canal, which increased their voyage time by about eight days. The world largely lost interest in Suez as soon as Ever Given was released. The situation, however, was still far from over for El Sayed and his pilots. The clearing of the massive backlog of vessels was critical for the future of global trade. The SCA team moved up to 80 ships every day, working day and night to bring them through the canal safety. The queue was cleared in six days. The week-long closure of the Suez Canal due to the vessel blockade has been resolved. But public awareness of the vulnerability of international trade has grown. Although billions of people rely on every component of the shipping system, which encompasses everything from fruits to machines to port workers and sophisticated software to oversee each process, no one pays attention to the myriad of hazards until something unexpected occurs. And that brings us to the end of this video. Let us know in the comments section how you think the blockade would have affected global trade if it was not dislodged in time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.